So now we proceed with the technical solution of the quantum harmonic oscillator problem. And I should mention that there exist uh, many equivalent ways to solve this problem. But today I'm going to present a purely algebraic solution, which is based on so-called creation annihilation operators. Uh, I'll introduce them in this video. And uh, as you will see, the harmonic oscillator spectrum and the properties of the wave functions will follow just from an analysis of these creation annihilation operators and their commutation relations. We're not going to even write down uh, the Schrodinger equation as the differential equation. We're not going to worry too much about any boundary conditions. So these operators and their commutation relations are going to be sufficient for us to determine uh, pretty much everything we want to know. And the problem that we're actually solving is uh, the eigenvalue problem for this uh, operator H with this uh, quadratic potential corresponding to the harmonic oscillator. So uh, again, the eigenvalue problem is H psi is equal to E psi. Now, uh, there are only uh, three dimensional quantities that appear in our problem on which our final results, in particular the energy spectrum, can possibly depend. And these quantities are the particle mass, the frequency of the oscillator, and uh, the Planck constant, which is always, the, which is always there. And um, it turns out that you can construct just one uh, parameter out of these guys, which has the physical dimension of energy, and this parameter is h uh, times omega. So this has the uh, physical dimension of energy. So whatever our spectrum is going to look like, so it must be, uh, it must scale as h omega. It must be proportional to h omega. So uh, motivated by this, let me write down my Hamiltonian uh, h divided by this h omega and it's going to be simply I first I first will write the potential energy term m omega x squared over 2 h bar uh, plus the kinetic energy p squared over 2 m omega over h bar so I just switched the order in which these two terms appear in this Hamiltonian and uh, the next step I'm going to use is also going to be pretty strange uh, from uh, any point of view. So I'm going to just write the first term as the square root uh, of m omega over 2 h bar x squared plus uh, the second term likewise is going to be p over 2 m omega h bar squared. And now, so the reason I wrote it this way is because I want to use an analog of the following expression that uh, we uh, know from elementary calculus, namely that if we have uh, two variables, let's say a squared minus b squared, we can write it as a uh, minus b uh, times a plus b. Or an equivalent expression to this involving complex numbers, if we have a squared plus b squared, so we can write it as a minus ib, a uh, plus ib. And when we square the imaginary constant, it's going to give rise to the plus sign here. So in, in this expression, I'm going to uh, uh, associate uh, the first term with a and the second term with b. And so what I'm going to write is going to be the following. So I will represent my Hamiltonian divided by h omega, this uh, energy scale and the problem as, uh, well, this guy, square root of m omega over 2 h bar x, minus i momentum, divided by this whole thing, times the same thing, but with a plus sign here. So m omega over 2 h bar x plus i p over 2 m omega h bar. At this stage, I have to admit that I have cheated very seriously in this derivation, and this equation contains uh, an error. And uh, as a matter of fact, there are some missing terms that I have uh, omitted. And in the next in video quiz, you're supposed to catch me and tell me where exactly I have cheated. So, hopefully, most of you have uh, figured out where the problem is. And, of course, the problem is uh, in that the objects that appear in our quantum mechanical problem are not just some uh, variables A and B. These are operators. And for the operators, in particular for operators X and P, it actually matters in which order they appear in an equation. So X 
times p is not equal to p times x. So in other words, these operators do not commute. And so if we take, if we try to rederive uh, this identity for these operators, we're going to see, of course, that there are going to be cross terms appearing. And uh, so therefore, there is an additional, there is an addition to this, to this guy. So let me, uh, let me write it explicitly. So this, uh, terms that, these terms that I have omitted, so it's equal to minus i over 2h bar, uh, the uh, commutator of x and p. And so this commutator of x and p is equal to x p minus p x. You can verify that this term indeed appears just by uh, expanding this product term by term and making sure that uh, we reproduce the Hamiltonian in the left hand side. One other thing we can verify by looking at this expression is that uh, the first bracket is uh, a Hermitian conjugate of the second bracket. So indeed, uh, x and p are physical operators, and as such, they are uh, Hermitian operators. So x dagger is equal to x, and p dagger is equal to p by definition. Therefore, if I Hermitian conjugate, let's say, the second bracket, so x will remain x, p will remain p, all the constants here are real, and the only thing which is going to uh, happen is that i will become minus i, so we'll reproduce the uh, first bracket in this uh, expression. Based on this um, fact, let me uh, introduce a new operator. So we'll just call the second bracket an, an operator A, and the first bracket is going to be Hermitian conjugate to it, therefore A dagger. And going a bit ahead of myself, let me uh, mention that these operators A dagger and A are called uh, creation and annihilation operators. And the following uh, discussion and derivation will contain uh, a proof that uh, these operators, these guys indeed deserve the names of creation annihilation operators. But to explain the reason uh, behind this terminology right away, let me advertise the main result before we actually derive it. And the main result here is the energy spectrum of the harmonic oscillator, which, as we shall see, contains a series of equidistant uh, energy levels, that is, energy levels such that any neighboring uh, pair of levels uh, are separated from one another by uh, the same energy, and this energy happens to be h omega, exactly the energy scale we discussed previously. And the energy of the ground state, the lowest energy state, uh, is uh, h omega over 2 and by the way this h omega over 2 comes uh, exactly from this uh, additional term that we have in this identity and so the importance of creation annihilation operators are in the following so let's say if we prepare our our quantum uh, oscillator in the ground state so let me sim uh, symbolically represent it by a dot here so let's say we have an oscillator in the ground state. And if we apply a creation operator A dagger, it will uh, create essentially quantum of energy uh, H omega by promoting uh, this uh, uh, oscillator from the ground state to the first excited state. If we apply it again, so uh, then we will go from the first excited state to the second excited state, etc., etc. So if we apply, let's say, A dagger 10 times, we will go from the ground state to the uh, 10th excited state. And you can probably guess that the action of the operator A is uh, opposite to it. So if we have, say have a, a quantum uh, state uh, with n equals 1, so this is the first excited state, by applying A we're going to go back to the uh, ground state. Okay. So essentially these operators A and A dagger, they move us um, uh, between these states uh, in, the, uh, in this energy landscape. And in the next video, we're going to prove all these statements, and this proof will rely in a very essential way on various commutation relations between the operators involved here, x, p, a, and a dagger.